my, my job is to somehow make them curious enough or persuade them by hook or crook to get more aware of themselves and where they came from and what they are into and what is already there and just to bring it out. This is what compels me to compel them. And I will do it by whatever means necessary. Welcome to the Black Girls Heal podcast, where we talk about healing our intimacy disorders, unresolved trauma, and building a healthy relationship with first ourselves and then others. Every episode, we will talk about advice you can apply today to break unhealthy patterns and grow in your self-worth. I'm Sheena Lachey, love addiction coach and trauma specialist. Let's begin. Hello, hello, and welcome to the latest episode of Black Girls Heal. I'm sending you all so, 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 so much love today. I hope that you are treating yourself well and that you are surrounded by people who treat you well as well. (laughs) Uh, With that said, today's episode, we are talking about friendships. I am not talking specifically uh, about friendships in a long time, y'all. Uh, of course, I mentioned friendships throughout examples and things like that, but just talking about our chosen family, which are our friendships, we have not had a topic on that in a minute. And so uh, we're going to do that today. And when I was thinking about what can we talk about in regards to friendships, I was thinking about how very a common theme that I've been seeing in a lot of my clients and students is working through friendships that seem to be expired. Now, the term expired may sound a bit inflammatory, right? Um, uh, How can a relationship be, a friendship especially, be expired? But there are some relationships that run their course. They have done the job that they needed to do. They were there during the seasons that we needed them. And they provided the wisdom and the comfort and the laughter and the distraction and the sisterhood or the brotherhood and the bonding that we needed. But now it's causing more dysfunction than not. It's causing more pain than not. It's causing more of an identity crisis, meaning you don't know, am I a good friend? Am I loved? Do people actually like me? Am I likable? Am I actually being selfish? Am I actually as giving as I thought I was? Um, Could I actually have a healthy relationship if this person is mad at me all the time? Am I giving enough? Am I giving too much? Am I too controlled? You know, all of the questions that you go through in your head when you're in an unequally yoked relationship with someone, someone that y'all are going in two different paths, y'all have two different mindsets, y'all have two different sets of values that don't complement each other anymore. It's not about having someone who's exactly like you and does everything that you want them to do and um, that y'all are replicas of each other. True relationships in all form grow because you have two different people coming from different perspectives, coming from different energies, learning how to live together, learning how to share and to grow and to support and to love each other. That's the beauty of of relationships. But when those relationships become toxic, when they absolutely can in friendships, we have to be able to question it and examine it in the same way we would a romantic partnership that may go sour, the same way we may do a job situation that may go sour. Our friendships, because they are chosen family, they don't get a pass from that type of evaluation. If anything, because they are the ones that we choose, those are the ones that we need to be as much, if not more so, intentional about because when we think about friendships and why it can be hard to 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 make transitions when we need to. In our minds, friendships are the relationships that are not supposed to ever end. They're supposed to be there through thick and thin forever. And sometimes we will have those lifelong friendships. And sometimes there are friendships that we thought would be that way. But once we look at where things are right now, where we've become, where we have gone, where they have gone, that might not be the case. So in today's episode, I'm going to talk about three things that I see often and friendships that may need to transition out, that may be a sign that this that the purpose of this friendship right now may have expired. And I want to name that in case someone has been feeling very confused and going back and forth about it. I hope that this helps. Thanks for listening to this week's podcast. Before we get started, let's take a small break to say thank you to this week's sponsors. 
Okay, so like I said, friendships that may feel toxic and hurtful and draining to us right now are often hard for us to look at critically because in our mind, this is our sister, this is our brother, this is who we, this has been our ride or die. Maybe we grew up together, maybe we went through things together and we were each other's comfort and safe space. Um, Maybe we made a pact. (laughs) Maybe we've been in each other's weddings. Maybe they took us in when we needed help, or maybe they, we took them in. You know, we have some type of deep, intimate bond. So we want to give every pass, every, every grace, every excuse that we can to bad behavior that may be hurtful to us. So excuses like they're just going through a hard time. Um, well, they know that they have an attitude, so at least they're they're owning it, I guess. I think about when people say declarative statements like, well, this is who I am. You're just going to have to take it when they are trying to excuse or defend bad, abusive behavior. And then you're on the other side, someone who loves them like, well, if this is who they are and you have to try to weigh all the other good things that you try to see that they bring to the relationship. So then you're like, well, I guess I have to take it. When here's the thing, y'all, you do not have to take anything. At any time, you get to decide that your standards for love, your standards for entry, for romantic partnerships, for friendships, for work, for everybody, just to be in your space and your energy, that the standards have shifted, that they have upgraded, that they have up-leveled, that what used to work before doesn't work right now. So if you say that you cannot talk to me respectfully, if you say that you cannot say sideways comments to me, uh, just whenever you feel like without a filter, if you're saying that at any time you can uh, go ghost on me when I, when I'm in a time of need, and then when you come back around, I'm just supposed to be like, oh, hey, what's up? And act like nothing happened and don't question you about it. If you say that's the best that you got, I can see that and I can honor that. And knowing that that's where you are right now, I can even see that without judgment. And I can say, I I need more and I deserve more. And so if you are not able to do that, I love you so much, but I'm going to have to rearrange my inner circle. I'm going to have to rearrange the people that I let close to my heart because this behavior right here triggers my abandonment trauma. It triggers my rejection trauma. It triggers a part of me that makes me feel like I have to give and to appease you and to make you like me, to make you want to be in relationship with me. I feel like I'm constantly having to apologize and fit myself to be who you want me to be. And that's not what I want. And I want to be in a relationship that is mutual and that is giving and that actually cares about how I feel versus turning it around to how you feel. So by the way, that's the first one. One of the hidden signs or the secret signs that I see often in relationships that are imbalanced or friendships that are imbalanced is that whenever you try to go to your friend in a healthy way, right? We, we all I hope that you are all cultivating the, the skills of communication and not expecting people to read your mind, not expecting people to just know when you're upset, to know how you are. You are an adult. And you have to use your words and you have to let people know what you need. Other people, may it may not be on their radar. Y'all may have a pattern where y'all are so used to just uh, sweeping things under the rug. So they think that they're doing the right thing where you're at a place where you actually want them to say something, but they don't know that the rules have changed. And also, if you or them or both of y'all together have operated in a place that is pretty dysfunctional or you come from settings that are dysfunctional, they may not know what you think is common sense. So you have to communicate what you need. You have to communicate, hey, this hurts my feelings or this is uh, what would help me feel more supported or this is uh, what I was thinking and this isn't probably what you meant, but this is how I took it. Like You have to express yourself so that y'all can find resolution so that any hurt feelings that may be there will be let go um, or have a chance to be let go so that y'all can move forward and have the friendship that you want to have. But going back to the point of what is the hidden sign, The hidden sign is if you go to your friend in a healthy way, 
and you communicate this to them, that they turn it back around on you and talk about how they are so hurt that your feelings are hurt that you would even think that they were a bad person and then they become emotional or they become angry or they become bitter or vengeful or they shut down and say, okay, that's fine. I got it. I won't say anything again. Or they use that as a platform to bring up every little bitty thing that they've been holding against you or they may make up something just so that it feels equal so that they don't have to feel the burn of self-accountability that maybe they did something that was hurtful and wrong because they have their own insecurity that if they admit to that, then that means that they're a bad person versus they're just a human who made a mistake, but they don't know how to place that. But what they do know how to do is to turn it back around on you. And so now you're playing field hockey between trying to, because again, you're coming from a healthy place. So you're trying to communicate to them in a healthy way. You're trying to validate them. You're trying to listen to them. And so the conversation becomes focus on them or you become you get punished emotionally pressured enough to drop it and to let it go or to say that okay I get it that's fine you're right I'll try better or they were very successful in making you think that you needed to be more patient or that they're going through a lot and so you have to give them space to continue to have bad behavior with no consequence if that is the pattern in a relationship with this type of person uh, again, they may be a person with a true heart of gold, but because of where their, their emotional maturity is, because of where their own personal insight is, because they are, they may be very used to being very defensive and throwing things back onto other people so that it's equal. And so everybody can get some. And of course, you know, many times this is not a conscious thought. Sometimes it is. But a lot of times people are just reflexively self-protective because of what they've gone through. And again, being a good friend, you may know that going back to you know, you know how they are. You know what they've been through. Y'all have seen each other's stories. You've held each other's hands through tears. So you may understand why they may be defensive. You may understand why they may have an attitude. You may understand why it's hard for them to see their part because of what they've tried to do. You might, you might even be thinking you've seen them improve better than how they used to be. And all of those things can be true, y'all. But what I constantly have to tell my students and what I'm going to tell y'all right now is nobody's emotional safety and security is more important than yours. Somehow we mistake that for us to be empathic and or empathetic and for us to uh, be caring and generous people, that that equates to we are now self-abandoning and we have to be self-sacrificial of what helps us feel emotionally safe. So if I'm actually a good friend who is generous and compassionate and I have a good heart, that means that when someone comes and they give me this very emotional story of why they are the way that they are, that gives them the free pass. It gives them the golden ticket to do whatever the fuck they want to do to us and just have like, I'm sorry. And then we continue to give them an unending number of chances. And that's not what we do here. That's not the game that we're going to play. Um, We are going to say my heart, my life, my spirit, my soul, my friendship, my mind, access to me is truly precious. It is truly valuable. And I can look you in the eyes and I can hold your heart and I can know that you are so precious and you are so valuable as well. But that does not mean that I have to deny myself, that I have to abandon myself to take care of you. We don't do that here anymore. That's how I used to be in the past. But now going forward, I need friendships that we can come to each other in our true form of humanity, imperfect, and we can grow together and we can listen to each other and we can say, you know what? I love you so much and this is hard for me, but I'm going to try. Or I had no idea that this was like this for you. I'm going to look at it um, and I hope that I can rebuild your trust. Or just to be real clear, be real real, sometimes y'all, our feelings do get hurt about things that are not the fault of our friends, but it is our trauma acting up. And we don't know that it's our trauma until we actually start to talk about it. So it's also appropriate for a friend in love 
to talk to you about what actually happened and talk about the facts and talk to you about the intentions so that you can say, oh, what I thought you meant and what I thought was happening isn't actually what was happening. And because you're healthy, you're going to receive it. You're not going to be like, well, you know, you, if you actually loved me, you would be groveling on the floor right now, which sometimes I've heard those stories as well. You are able to, because you're coming from a place of self-ownership, of insight, and again, emotional maturity, y'all can be two adults having this conversation, a tough conversation, and maybe a tearful conversation, and maybe a hard conversation that y'all might not, y'all might even need a little bit of space to start and restart again, but that's okay because you are coming as adults. By the way, y'all, um, I feel like I have to drop the disclaimer in here every couple episodes when I talk about tough conversations. Do not have tough conversations over text. I repeat, do not have tough conversations over text. That includes, do not text your friend, hey, the other day when this happened, my feelings were kind of hurt. And I just wanted to let you know because I didn't want to hold a grudge. You don't have to say anything. Um, I know you probably didn't mean it, but I just wanted to tell you. That, and I know some of y'all are like, girl. <laughs> I did that this morning. <laughs> I know, I know there's at least 20 people who are like, I. that's the only way I communicate. And here's the thing with that, y'all. When you do those type of texts and communication, even if you're coming from a good place, your friend on the other side doesn't hear your tone of voice. They don't have the opportunity to to ask you follow-up details. They don't have the opportunity to ask you if you're actually mad and hear your voice or not because now their abandonment trauma and everything is kicked up as well. They have to wait for you to respond if you are at your work shift or if you're doing this because you're being avoidant, they have to wait for you to respond because you sent the text and then hid your phone, you know, and decided that you weren't going to look at the text until you were emotionally ready. So now your friend is being held emotional, ho- emotionally hostage because someone that she loves is upset with her and she really wants to fix it, right? Many a friendship has been broken has been lost, has been damaged and wounded only for continued fractures to continue to get bigger and bigger and bigger because of something that was never fully discussed before. Because what I make up is the fear is if I have this really intimate conversation with you, sometimes it's not even about you, it's more about them. You're afraid that you're going to hurt them. So if I actually call you and tell you this versus just sending a text and trying to make it seem easy breezy and and casual, it's going to make you feel like you're a bad friend and it's going to make you feel like you've done something wrong. But we're losing the art and we're losing the importance of human beings having human connection. You're losing the ability to build that secure attachment between the both of you to be able to, if it's face to face, reach out and hug it out. To if it's if you can't be face to face, um, even if it's not FaceTime, but just voice to voice, to be able to hear the tenderness and the softness, to hear the emotion of the other person, to be able to respond appropriately. If there is so much that needs to be said, even in the smallest of situations, for there to be healing, especially when I think about the population of women who listen to this podcast, a population of women who come from backgrounds of emotional neglect, of people. Uh, making assumptions about them, people who have tried to pressure them, people who have tried to isolate them, people who have cheated them, people who have made them earn love. We are so sensitive to every single form of threat. And so we need the opportunity to not only be given the chance to rectify and, and to heal with our friends and to hear their voice and to hear that they're not mad at us still, like mad at us in a way of, um, we're cutting you off kind of thing that we have to learn how we can have conflict with people. And that doesn't mean the end um, and go quick into our cutoff stance and say, well, see, that's why I don't need friends anyways, or um, get really busy or say, well, you know what? She can do whatever she wants to do. I'm going to focus on me right now. You know, she's always tripping like that, which is a very convenient way to 
identify, yeah, that might be her problem, but it's also a good way for you to compartmentalize what it feels like for a friend to to be hurt by you and to not be able to have any power to to control it or to fix it. So I'm just going to put that in a little box and distract myself and act like it doesn't bother me um, when really it does. I don't know about y'all, y'all, but the people who I love when they are upset with me, I need that fixed. It is really important that I, as much as I can, sometimes it doesn't matter what I do or what I say or how I apologize or how I try to make amends, you know, people's feelings are going to be their own. But for me, it is so important for me that I take the ownership and responsibility to do everything that I can that is healthy, right? Because I can't if if their hurt feelings is based on something that was triggered that's deeper than them, all I can do is apologize for my part and they have to do the rest. But I want to have the opportunity to do that. If there's something, if there's any way that I can make amends, verbal or otherwise, I want the opportunity to do that. And your friends, if they are healthy, they want the same for you as well. So don't send texts only, okay? If you got to send a text, then the text is, hey, girl, how you been? Or, hey, girl, what you doing later? I, I got to tell you something. Don't say we have to talk. Say, I got to tell you something. Let me know when you have a few minutes. Um, because we have to talk is the universal, you don't fucked up um, statement. And no one wants to have to sit and wait to see here how they fucked up. They're going to be like, tell me now. Y'all going to be texting. Y'all going to be in meetings, going back and forth. Girl, drama. Let's not do that. Let's avoid it. The second sign that you may be in a relationship that has expired after every time you try to talk with them, they make it, they they make your feelings about them and how you have to fix it, um, make it feel like they're a good person, even if they weren't acting very good in the moment. Um, and you have to take blame for something that isn't really your part, all of that stuff, right? The second sign that a friendship may have expired is they like to do gotcha moments to prove when you're wrong. So this is kind of multifold in a lot of ways, but this kind of goes under the category of frenemies. Frenemies and kind of mean girl behavior. So you know, liking to call you out and poke fun at you, uh, make jokes at your expense. So laughing more at you than with you. I have heard if <laughs> I'm about to say this example, and I know there's probably going to be about three, maybe four people who listen to this podcast who are like, that's my example. And it probably is because I keep hearing this over and over and over again. But in group chats, I've heard I hear it often, but I've heard it a lot recently again, how you will be in a friend group chat and two or three of the people will start having their own conversation about you or, um, you know, excluding you in the conversation, ignoring your messages, but then they have their own. When they do talk to you, they're really not interested in what you have to say or they blow you off and dismiss you. So it's this public digital bullying, right? Again, mean girl behavior. And again, when they do say something, it is not flattering to you. So if y'all are a group of friends who tend to be kind of funny, or if y'all are a group of friends, which, you know, I think is common, I think, especially as as Black people, but especially like in our group chats, like we're cracking jokes, we're trading TikToks and memes, we're having fun. We're making fun of how ugly somebody's ex was. Like we are talking all kinds of shit in love, right? So part of that is common, but when it becomes skewed, when it becomes one-sided like that all of the time, if something good is happening to you and then they have to one-up you or they aren't really that happy for you, I think many of us, y'all, have friends that are ops, but because they've been our homegirls for so long, again, because we've been at each other's weddings, because we know their mama and them, like we want to give them grace and opportunities to fix it or we just want to ignore it but really these people do not like you they don't like you and the way that my people pleasing used to be set up is I used to internalize well is there something wrong with me like what more could I be doing is there something that I'm missing Uh, And I would kind of try to use it for my own type of self-development versus realizing that friends are not abusive. Friends are not critically mean. Friends 
want to build you up. Friends actually enjoy you. They don't tolerate you. And if you have people in your friend group who are just tolerating you, or better yet, if you are tolerating them, and this also means if you're not being mean to them, which I guess is going to go into the third one. So I'm kind of skipping ahead. So let me let me stick with this point. Let's talk about someone who you can tell they, and maybe you can't tell, maybe this is the first time I'm putting some things together for you, but they're having behavior that makes it feel like they think that you're super annoying, that, you know, you just, you're always in your feelings and thinking about stuff. Um, you're always trying to talk about stuff and it's not that big of a deal. When those types of interactions happen more often than not, you may need to think, has this relationship expired from its current purpose? And I haven't said this yet, y'all, but if there are people that are no longer serving purpose, the purpose of being emotionally safe for you and emotionally enjoyable and that y'all are growing together, that doesn't mean you have to cut them off. There's such a thing, There's we need to get out of the black and white. Either you're my best friend or I never talk to you again and I treat you like a stranger. There are multiple levels of relationships between best friend, inner circle, to close friend, to uh person that I know, to acquaintance, to associate, to someone I don't know anymore. You know, there are different levels of where you can downgrade people to be depending on what your standards are for relationships. And you have to know what your standards are. This past weekend, I did the Healing Fear and Distrust Towards Healthy Men workshop. And we talked for three hours, y'all about what it looks like to be in healthy relationships with people and what the signs are of of availability and what it looks like to be in relationships with predators. And we talked about some current examples of the women who attended to have that opportunity to see practically what does this look like, right? And y'all can get the workshop as well if y'all did not have a chance to attend or if you didn't even know that that exists, that I have a workshop that talks about healing fear and distrust towards healthy men. Um, You can get that. I'll share the link at the end um, and also put it in the show notes. But one of the things that I said over and over that I think it's easy for people to kind of bypass because you're looking for something more flashy, you're looking for something more sexy, or maybe because we hear it often, but you you need to know what your standards are, what your standards for access and for entry into your heart. And just saying, I want to be respected and I want to feel safe and I want them to be nice is not enough. That is flimsy. Anybody is nice. The, the fuck boy around the corner is the nicest man in the world until he's not. You know, that doesn't mean anything. You have to be very clear on how do you want to be treated. And I think the problem for many of us, which is why it's so important you do your your deep healing work, your internal work when it comes to this, is we have not had the felt sense of what it means to be celebrated, to be truly liked and be to be truly enjoyed. We have the felt sense of what it's like to earn love. We know what it feels like for someone to want us with lust and to want to have sex with us. Um, We know what it feels like to um, fight for your right to be seen in the room and then get attention that way. But we don't know what it feels like for someone to deeply enjoy us just for who we are, um, flaws and all, and to not want anything from us, but to see us happy and to see us shine. And so when we're around people who don't enjoy us, um, but they enjoy us, they, they don't enjoy us for who we are, but for what we give them, whether or not we give them laughs, whether or not we give them access, whether or not we're just who they talk to when they're bored, that feels like community to us because that's what we've always had versus being able to see it for the, the dupe and the fake, the fake love that it is. Pros know a thing or two about how to get the toughest messes clean. That's why they've long trusted cleaning products from Ecolab for their businesses. And now that level of clean is available for your home at the Home Depot. Introducing Ecolab Scientific Clean, a full line of pro-grade cleaning products for all your home's needs. So you can clean like you mean business. Now available exclusively at the Home Depot. How doers get more done. Welcome to BreezeLine, where the sky's the limit thanks to better internet. With lightning fast speeds up to one gig, you can game like a boss, stream like a pro, and watch like there's no tomorrow. 
Stream, watch, post, send, and trend. Do it all with our fiber-powered network, bringing you reliable, fast internet. Welcome to BreezeLine. Visit BreezeLine.com for latest offers. Service subject to availability. New customers in select areas only. Visit BreezeLine.com for details. Hey, we hope you're enjoying the podcast so far. Let's take a quick break to say thanks to this week's sponsors. And with that said, let's talk about the third sign. Y'all, if y'all enjoy these podcast episodes, I would love to hear hear back from y'all. Um, I would love to hear in the DMs. I would love for you to leave a review so that more people can find the podcast. Um, but it really, really means a lot when I hear back how the episodes uh, help y'all. And y'all do a really great job about that. But I just, for those who have always had the thoughts to share, but you've never been able to, I want you to know that I love receiving the notes. I am not in the DMs like I used to anymore. And I have team members who help me with the emails. So I may not personally respond to all of them, but the the feedback and the love, I always appreciate it. So whether or not it is a comment on YouTube or if it is on a post on Instagram, Thank you to everyone who has sent it. Um, I really appreciate it. And um, I'm so happy that the podcast has been helpful to you. So with that said, the third sign that you may have a friendship that has expired is y'all don't have anything to talk about. Actually, let me be more clear. Y'all don't have anything to talk about except for mess, broken relationships, trauma, and drama. I'm going to repeat that again. Y'all don't have anything to talk about whenever y'all get together unless one or each other's or somebody else's mess, whatever's happening, whoever's broken relationships, trauma or drama. The reason why I have this one here is because from what I've heard from my students, people that I work with, um, and even people in my own social group, when you reach a place where you have outgrown dysfunction and you no longer want it to be your normal. You can see it for what it is. You can see it that it happens sometimes, but you are trying to grow beyond, right? You want to do personal development. You want to grow your spirituality. You want to learn how to become more emotionally intelligent. You want to learn how to put down boundaries. You want to learn how to take ownership for the mistakes that you make instead of just saying, well, other people have to get on your level or they didn't deserve me. Like maybe you didn't deserve them. And that's an okay thing to say while you are working on becoming a better person, a better human, a better woman, better, you know, you you get what I'm saying. And so when you get to that place, you can want your friends to come with you, but you're speaking a completely different language. They might change the subject. They might literally not even hear you. Like it's, it's really interesting how our brain sometimes just won't even compute things that we are not ready to receive. So it is so common that I've seen and I've heard people that you will say something to them and it's as if you were talking to a wall. Not because they're trying to be dismissive, but they just can't, um, just, just not computing. Going back to the example from earlier, you know, say you're trying to do the communication skills that you've learned in therapy or if you're a recovery school student that you've learned with me or in our programs or here on the podcast. So many of y'all use what you learn here on the podcast and you go and you uh, you bring it back to your everyday life and you try to use those skills with your loved ones and they're like, what are you talking about? Or again, they turn it back around on you or they say it's not that big of a deal. In addition to the annual party trip that y'all have, you suggest a yoga retreat and they act like you've lost your mind. They consistently talk about how they're done with the relationship or they're going to do better. They're going to make changes, but they don't. The next week, they're almost reveling and telling you about the next crazy, the latest crazy thing that just happened between them and their situationship. And because that is where your conversation used to be. That is what used to bring y'all both enjoyment, the ups and downs, the roller coasters. And now you're at a place where you're like, I understand things happen and nobody's perfect, but are you looking for this? Are you feeding into this bad behavior because it's what you like, because it's comfortable to you? 
or are you actually starting to have change? And they are the friends who are not ready for that type of inf- information. They don't receive it. And they may even, but they actually may even ask you for it sometimes. But again, part of the, part of what they get enjoyment from is the up and down. It is the roller coaster. It is the back and forth. It is, I kind of love when a man talks to me crazy, but then be really upset when all the consequences of what comes with being with a man like that or a partner with that, because that's not exclusive to a gender. Um, but what it comes with being with a toxic partner like that, then you want to feel really upset about it, not understanding that all of that comes in a package. And then they don't want to hear that from you while they're complaining about why does this keep happening to me? You get what I'm saying? So sometimes you have outgrown the people that you are with and it's time for you to leave them. And again, not cut them off, not never talk to them again. But when I say leave, I'm, I think I mean more leaving the stress of feeling like you have to be an emotional missionary and save your friends if they don't want to be saved. You can share the good news of what you have learned, of who you are, of your resources, of what has brought you joy, but it's their responsibility to pick it up and come with you. And some of them will, and some of them won't. You know, I hear, I was listening to actually someone that um, I'm learning from right now, one of my coaches. And one of the stories that she gave is how she would have friends that were kind of like this, right? Talking about, you know, other people in the neighborhood and talking about each other's families and all that stuff. And just kind of like being like neighborhood gossips, right? And talking about their husbands and how much their husbands get on their nerves and all that stuff. Um, And so she, my coach, moved away and came back like five or six years later and had like a catch-up brunch with them. And all of the women were talking about the exact same things. They had not progressed. They still hated their husbands. They still um, were talking about the same types of things and same types of people, and they weren't any better. And meanwhile, my coach had been doing all this personal development work. You know, she was happy as she had ever been in great, in great shape, loving relationship with her husband, um, had built something really amazing for herself to give herself a purpose outside of, you know, just, just home life and the other things as well. And those women could not relate to that. And, and she did not look at them with judgment, but more, a little bit of sadness, right? And I think when you look at the people that you love and you want so much, you want the best for them, it is very sad. It It is that you really want them to understand, to get it. You do really want to hold out, but here's the thing. In those types of relationships, it stunts your growth because you're so focused on trying to get them to be better and take medicine that they don't want to take, you know, like they're just going to you know, you put the spoon in their mouth and they spit it out if they if you even if you even get it in because they're just moving their head around. Meanwhile, you're not getting better. You're not taking your medicine. You're not doing your exercises. You're not growing because you're trying to go back and fix someone who doesn't want to be fixed. Um, and fix is a strong word, but you know, get get helped or be supported in the way that they say they want to be supported. And you have to trust that based on the example that you've set, that when they're ready, that they will find their way, whether or not that is back to you and y'all getting closer together whenever they're ready or somebody else, because maybe this season has changed and the, and the purpose of what this relationship was supposed to give has been fulfilled and grieving relationships that grow apart and friendships is so painful because like I said, at the beginning, friendships are a chosen family and no one gets into a friendship expecting that it is supposed to end. I think even in romantic partnerships, we have we have language around the the dissolution of a romantic partnership from divorces and breakups and all that other stuff and so many resources that talk about that. But even even if I were to Google or even if you were to Google dealing with a friendship breakup versus doing dealing with a romantic partnership breakup, there would be <laughs> I can't even think about like thousands more results than than for friendship breakups. But I think friendship breakups, because these are, if nothing else, are soul family relationships. It hurts so much deeper um, to fill to fill that gap because they were never supposed to be gone in the first place. 
And so I just want to say that to validate how hard this can be, or maybe has been for those of you who've had to do this before, but it makes way for the friendships that are ready to step into this place for the sisters and the brothers and the persons who are ready to hold space and grow with you to catapult you for y'all to run off and become your best versions together for y'all to hype each other up and to be able to balance turning up while also being people who thrive in every area of your life, emotionally, spiritually, mentally, you know, sexually, financially, and that y'all can hold hold each other accountable and grow together and, and have mutual wisdom. Those people exist for you, but you only have so much energy and space and time. And you want to make sure that you're giving that to the people who are able to receive it and who want it. So I hope that this podcast was helpful. I hope that these three tips um, helped you get where you were going. Um, For those who are interested in the workshop that I mentioned earlier, um, if you go to blackgirlsheal.org slash workshop, it's going to take you to our website that has a list of our workshops. And there's actually two workshops that you could get. You can, um, if you're looking to learn about relationships that are available and what those standards are and what that looks like for you. You can do the healing fear and distrust towards healthy men workshop um, that's listed there. But the other one is called relationship goal setting workshop, um, which was a 90 minute workshop that I did earlier this year on exactly that setting goals in the four domains of our life for our family relationships, our friendships, our romantic partnerships, and our self-love, and what it looks like to take care of ourselves, um, to treat ourselves as a priority, and to love on ourselves. So either one of those are available for you or both. So that is it for now, y'all. Again, I'm sending you so much love, and I look forward to seeing y'all in next week's episode. Take care of yourselves. Hey, so thanks for listening to today's podcast. If you enjoy what you've learned, it doesn't have to stop here. You can check out the blackgirlsheal.org website and grab the worksheet for this week's episode or any of your other favorite episodes from our shop with an overview of the main points, healing circle discussion questions and journal prompts and challenges that you can take with you into the week. Also, you can check out any of our other self-study and coaching programs, resources, and freebies to help you heal from the intimacy disorders of love addiction, love avoidance, love deprivation, and the trauma that causes it. The best time to start or restart your healing journey is now. We hope you enjoy all of these resources. And until next time, remember you are so loved and we'll see you in the next episode. Take care of yourselves. Welcome to BreezeLine where the sky's the limit thanks to better internet. With lightning fast speeds up to one gig, you can game like a boss, stream like a pro, and watch like there's no tomorrow. Stream, watch, post, send, and trend. Do it all with our fiber-powered network bringing you reliable, fast internet. Welcome to BreezeLine. Visit BreezeLine.com for latest offers. Service subject to availability. New customers in select areas only. Visit BreezeLine.com for details. With one of the best savings rates in America, banking with Capital One is the easiest decision in the history of decisions. Even easier than choosing Slash to be in your band. Next up for lead guitar. You're in. Cool. (laughs) Yep, even easier than that. And with no fees or minimums on checking and savings accounts, is it even a decision? That's banking reimagined. What's in your wallet? Terms apply. See CapitalOne.com slash bank for details. Capital One and a member FDIC.